Today we are going to talk about our old Ford bump stick and what we're going to do to replace it in the Ford Bronco build that we're doing currently. Welcome to another episode of Mod Point 3 Garage. I am Chris and this is our Ford Explorer uh, 1997 uh, stock 5.0 motor and uh, we, have, we have stripped it down and at this point we're going to get it bored 30 over. We're going to put a 347 stroker kit in it and um, we're going to build a kind of a, a hopped up version of a 5.0 or 347 that isn't a real high RPM motor. We're going to go, we're going to be running at lower RPM, higher torque. So everything we're putting in this, we're trying to build our torque numbers down low. Uh, we're talking like from idle up to, you know, 3000 RPM, something like that. And uh, so, and at the same time, we don't have uh, an unlimited amount of money to spend. So we're, we're trying to do this reasonably to where we can get this uh, truck running at a higher than standard level uh, without breaking the bank. Uh, but one of the key elements that we're missing right now, we need to choose our cam. So we did a lot of research on this uh, over a few weeks. And the research that we did was looking at our local forums, uh, looking at classic Bronco forums. There's a ton of information in there. Uh, we watched a ton of videos and we called almost every major cam manufacturer and gave them our specs and got their input on what we should be doing. And then on top of that, we've been uh, looking, watching a healthy dose of uh, Richard Holdner there who has several good videos on Ford 5.0 and Ford 347 builds uh, using everything from uh, an E7 head to a GT40 head to uh, some aftermarket aluminum heads uh, and then also various cams. Uh, he seems to really like the, uh, the Comp Cams Extreme Energy line. Uh, so that is one of the top runners, I think, in this. Uh, but here in just a second, I'm going to actually put down our like five, top five or six cams, the reasons why. And then I want to get your feedback on which cam we should get. And then we're just going to order it, get it sent in here so we can get this thing built. So when I say mild, we're talking about, from a lift standpoint, we're talking about anywhere from about 500 to about 530. I don't know that I want to go much over 530 because we're going to be keeping the stock heads and I'm not going to have the heads machined uh, for like double springs. So I'm going to be using, this, um, I am going to upgrade the springs. I figured out the comp spring that I'm going to get. It is a single spring uh, because we're not doing super high RPM. So uh, I don't think I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be falling off uh, considerably at 5,500 RPM because I don't think I'm going to be running that high for most of what I'm doing here. Um, so I think a single spring would be fine. Uh, and then the reason why we're doing that also is because later on, my expectation is we're going to upgrade the heads to an aftermarket head. Uh, so at that point I can just strip them off, uh, and maybe sell the heads and then get a new set of heads and put them on. But the base is solid and I can, I can literally do anything I want to at that point. So the stock cam that came in this, uh, Ford Explorer is a... 256, 266 duration, 422 and 448 lift, and a 116 lobe separation. So that, that's the numbers that I got on it anyway from looking it up. And so, you know, um, a 448 on exhaust and a 422 on intake uh, is better than some of the older Fords, but it's not anywhere near where we're gonna be going. So that said, I'm thinking like for a mild build, I'm thinking like lift, in the 500 to 530 range. Uh, duration is gonna be like in the 260 to 280 for total duration. And then like a 112 or 114 lobe separation. So let's talk about lobe separation angle. That, that's uh, one area uh, that I learned a lot about. Uh, so the stock cam is a 116 lobe separation, which gives you smooth idle, uh, gives you uh, smooth vacuum, um, and, and um, makes it for a real streetable cam. Uh, as you drop down, you start bringing down your torque to a lower RPM. Uh, you're also bringing your vacuum down, although I don't know that you're bringing it down a lot until you get like down past 110, 108, something like that. You're increasing your max torque when you go down on lobe separation angle. You're also uh, shrinking your power band when you're dropping in lobe separation angle. So there are a lot of things, and obviously if you increase your lobe separation angle, all of those things reverse. So when I'm looking at cams 116 um, normal, uh, most of the cams that I'm looking at are at the 112, 114. So they are less, but not extremely less. 
Uh, I did find one that had a 110 lobe separation angle, uh, but I think that might be too low for what I'm looking for. So that said, let's go take a look at the six choices that I've given myself for this build. All right, so these are the six choices that um, I have given myself up to this point, unless you guys have other choices that I don't have up here. But this is what I boiled it down to, and I think I literally had probably close to 15 cams that uh, I was looking at. But I narrowed it down based off of if the lift was too high, if I felt the lift was too high and that we were gonna have to machine the heads in order to get uh, springs enough to, to fit, I, I took those out. So basically anything over 535 I took out. Um, anything with a LSA less than 110 and probably most of the 110s I took out. So these are my choices and they're not in any particular order. Uh, but the CompCams XE264HR, if you watch Richard Holdner's YouTube videos, uh, I know a lot of you have, probably most of you have, but if you haven't, I'll link him down in the description because uh, I, I can't stop watching his Ford uh, videos, his Ford 5.0 block videos. Uh, but he used this cam in one of the scenarios that he built motors in uh, and it worked really well. He actually touts the XE274HR. From what I heard from comp cams, that was too much uh, cam for what I'm looking for without changing out a bunch of stuff on the head. So at this point, the XE264HR is probably better suited. 35-349-8 uh, is, uh, is the part number. 264-274 uh, 274 duration, a 512 lift, so that's really kind of right in the sweet spot for me anyway. 114 lobe separation angle, which is again kind of in that sweet spot, 1500 to 5500 RPM. Um, I actually called comp twice, once when I thought I was just going to keep the 302, and then once after I decided to go 347, and both times they recommended this cam for that. So that's kind of where I'm leaning, uh, plus I've got several of you stating that this is the cam to go with. There is another cam which is really catching my eye, which I'll tell you about in a minute. The second one, Comp Camps Magnum 35308-8. This one, I can't find a forum that this isn't suggested. Um, especially the Northern, uh, the NorCal Broncos, Northern California Broncos forums. This one I saw a lot in there. 266, 270 uh, duration. 533 lift, so that would be at the maximum lift that I'm looking for, 114, which is normal, uh, 1200 to 5200, so we're bringing down the RPMs a little bit. Uh, I did some research on the Magnums, though, and they and Comp themselves actually says it's lazy at low RPM, so I don't get that if we're, if we're talking about a good 4x4 um, cam, but may, maybe I just don't understand it. The Comp Cam's XE258HR, so just a little bit less duration than the 264HR. Uh, Part number 35, 512-8. That's a 258, 264, so we're dropping down a little bit from here. We're also dropping to 480, which is just slightly above stock uh, lift on that with a 114 lobe separation angle. 1200 to 5200, so this would probably be, I would consider this to be one of the more mild cams in the group that I'm looking at. Um, smooth, it's supposed to be a smooth idle, really easy to use. David Bruner actually sent, thanks David, sent me a spreadsheet of uh, a lot of the cams that, that he looked at when he was building his, and this is the one that kind of stuck out to me. The Crane 444211. I don't remember why this one popped up, but it popped up two or three times, so I went in and put it in there. 262, 270, so kind of right in the middle of these two right here, with a 530 lift, so that's right about the top of the sweet spot, right? And the, But it's a 112 uh, lobe separation angle versus a 114, which is what the Magnum has. Uh, 1500 to 5000, which is what I'm looking at. So this one is intriguing me a lot, uh, although I can't find a lot of information on it outside of the forum suggesting it. The Edelbrock 3722, uh, it's in the Roland Thunder series. Uh, 282, 282, so the highest duration of all of them that I've got up here for the most part um, for intake and exhaust. And a 498, so that's right at the 500, which is where I was going to start with a 110, 110 lobe separation angle. And then talking about what we were talking about earlier about lobe separation angle, uh, kind of making a real lumpy idle. So that would make, I guess, the Roland Thunder make sense on that. Idle to 5,500, which, which really I like, because I like that idle, I like that real low RPM cam 
And then that was also suggested by Edelbrock. Now, the reason why I brought up Edelbrock in here is because Edelbrock being one of the biggest names out there, I wanted to see what Edelbrock suggested uh, for theirs. And this was their suggestion uh, for the particular build that I'm doing. And then last and uh, probably my second favorite or my first favorite or my second favorite, I don't really know. I'm leaning towards this one or the comp cams is the Lunati 203-50612 which is 276, 284, a little bit more duration here. Uh, 525 lift, so a little bit more lift here with a 112 uh, lobe separation angle uh, versus a 114. So probably a lumpier idle, uh, bringing down the RPM to 1000 versus 1500, kind of pushing that torque down as low as I can get it. Uh, Lunati suggested this twice with two different uh, calls that I did. Uh, and then I also saw this one on the Classic Broncos forum as well several times. So um, the, the Lunati and the Comp Cams 264 are probably my two biggest picks, but I put all of these in here because I could literally be swayed to go with any of them. So I'm looking to see anyone that might have any uh, experience with these cams in a similar build. Please, if you would, put your comments down below because I'm going to be choosing this cam here pretty soon. Uh, all of them are in stock and they're all about the same price. So uh, not that big a deal. And I think the springs that I've chosen from comp cams will actually work with all of these because the lift is about the same. So uh, I'm going to put this information down in the uh, comment section as well. So if you wanted to see this yourself, you could. So this would be the biggest next step of my build. All right, so that's it. Uh, please tell me what do you think? Where should I go with this uh, whole cam um, on this uh, project? And then as soon as I pick the cam, I'm taking the block down to the shop and we're gonna start getting the work done on that. And then as soon as I get the stroking kit in and uh, choose the cam, which will be after you guys give me some feedback on this, we'll get to rolling with the build and get that done. My goal is to have this built completely um, by mid to late February. Uh, at the same time, I'm also going to be building the 4R70W as well. Um, and uh, that's more of a, I am going to post a video on the 4R70W just because there are some really good build, uh, some really good build videos out there. Uh, so I'm not going to go into um, as much detail, but also the, the really good videos are really slow. So I'm going to go and speed it up a little bit and show you kind of how that turned out. And then hopefully I can get both of those mated in the chassis by the end of February, and then we'll get the body on the chassis, that way we can start kind of getting things wired. Uh, that, that's the goal anyway. Uh, that's a wrap from Mile Point 3 Garage. I appreciate any feedback you guys can give me. Let's get this thing built.